Good morning. How you doing? This is Minister Peyton Moore coming at you today. I hope you all are feeling good and great today. God is blessing and miracles are coming. God is bringing healings to those that are willing to receive. You have to receive his word. You have to stay prayerful. You have to stay in faith. I just want everybody to know that God is a great, amazing God. Today, we're going to be talking about the church. It's time for a revival. It's time for a revival. That's the title today. It's time for a revival. But we're going to open up with prayer and we're going to do several scriptures today, and I hope that you all enjoy the message that I'm about to bring to you. But it's time for a revival, church. It's time for a revival, people. Satan is trying every trick that he can to get involved and get into the mix of God's children. We got to get back to praying. We got to get back on our knees. We got to get back to raising our hands up in the air and waving them like we just don't care to almighty Jesus Christ. Because he is our deliverer. He is the one that makes things happen. He is the one that delivers us from all sickness, from anything that comes our way. He's the one that delivers us from the enemy. So we got to get back to the church. It's time for a revival. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for watching over me and my family. I thank you for blessing me. Dear Lord, I ask you to bless those that are in need, dear Lord. I ask you to bless the families in my neighborhood, in my community, dear Lord. I ask you to touch those that are sick. I ask you to help those in the school system, dear Lord. Help the children. Keep a hedge over them. Uh, cover them in your blood. Protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger, dear Lord. I ask you to come over this country, dear Lord, and lift up this dark cloud of evilness and the violence and the division and the racism, dear Lord. I ask you just to come into the hearts of individuals, dear Lord. I ask you to come into the lives of the pastors and the leaders to bring your true word, dear Lord. This Church need a revival, dear Lord. Our body, which is the temple of Christ, need a revival, dear Lord. We need to be delivered, saved, sanctified, and filled with your Holy Spirit, dear Lord. We need that Holy Ghost Spirit, dear Lord. We need to go back to getting on our knees. We need to go back to crying out to you and lifting our arms to you. We need to tarry. We need to tarry on because I'm telling you, somewhere along the way, the church is losing it. As a whole, the church is losing it. We're not talking about denominations. We're talking about the body of Christ. Somewhere they're losing it, dear Lord. I ask you just to touch the hearts and minds to bring people back together. Cut out all this racism. Cut out all this division. Cut off all this hate and this hatred that's coming in amongst the Christians, dear Lord. I ask you to cast out every demon and every evil spirit that's coming up on us and cast out every disease of sickness that is coming up on us mentally, physically, even in our families, dear Lord, we ask you to bring families back together, bring husbands and wives back together, bring children and parents back together. Just bring families back together where we can be on one accord and unified in your name, Jesus Christ, as I pray. Amen. Now, the church need a revival and we finna get right into it. Charles Carlson wrote this, Charles, Charles Carlson, and I love reading what other people have wrote because it helps enlighten me on things that I can kind of concentrate on and not say nitpick, but I can kind of focus and say, wow, that is happening. The church do need a revival. I can remember the time when we used to have revivals in church and you saw healings and you saw deliverance and you saw people being set free from sins, drug addiction, alcoholism, marriages coming back together, children coming back home. Uh, people were just uh, being blessed financially and they was being blessed on their jobs and businesses and, and things were just happening and it was just miracles and you've seen healings. People are hearing. I'm, I can testify to that. 
uh, the hearings being coming back. I was a child that suffered with a bad skin disease. Skin cleared up. Uh, I seen people that had cancer and people that was dealing with high blood pressure and different diseases and people was getting prayed for and hands was being laid on with olive oil. But I'm talking about some true healing right here. I'm not talking about nobody laying hands on you and pushing you down to the ground. And, and you heard people speaking in godly tongues. You heard people, you seen people shouting in a sweet way. You saw people just worshiping and praising God. But somewhere along the way in America, and I'm going to talk about the black church, you have got away from it. It's not all about the, the hooping and the hollering and the screaming and the jumping up and down, giving the fine brimstone message. It's about connecting with people, talking to people, letting people know about heaven, sin, and hell. We didn't got away from that. The church is supposed to be a place of healing. Not condemning and throwing people in hell. The church is supposed to be a place of praying and worshiping, not a place of sitting back in comfort in the air condition in your, on a nice cushioned chair. We didn't got so cute. We didn't got so, you know, nice suits and, you know, nice shoes. And, you know, we want to look good and we want to feel good uh, and nice dresses and, and this and that and jewelry. And something happened. I think you got a little too comfortable. Because I can remember the wooden floors, that wooden bench. And you got on that altar with just that little vinyl pad on there. And you was on that altar until your knees got numb. You was on that altar crying out to God. You was on that altar asking God to forgive you. You was repenting and you was receiving the Holy Spirit. You was being healed from diseases. You was being healed in your marriages. You was being healed in your families. You was being healed and delivered and set free. God, people was receiving the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost speaking in godly tongues, communicating with God. What happened? Now when I see people from a third world country come from Africa and these third world countries and they come to America and I'm watching, I'm sitting back, how they praising and how hard they're worshiping because you know what? Those people, a lot of them came from having nothing and coming to America and gained something and they're worshiping God harder and better than the Western European so-called Christians are because they know where they come from. They know their ancestors. They know the Masonic law. They know the struggle. But we're over here being brainwashed with a lot of crap because we're not the Gentiles. We are the chosen people of God. God chose the Hebrew Israelites, and every time I read the Bible, that Hebrew Israelite just keep popping up, or Israelites just keep popping up. I didn't hear nothing about Jews till I got to the book of Esther. So there's something going on here. How can people come from a place with no running water, living in dirt, living in huts, and they're over there worshiping God, being healed? And we sit right over here in America in these nice big churches, whether they big or small, and we got all this air conditioning, all this cushion and nice clothes, and oh, we got all the instruments, and we got all the lights, and we got all of this, and we sitting back like, it's just, we just chilling. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I see these people coming from Africa and Jamaica and coming from Mexico and El Salvador and, and Guatemala and all these other foreign countries and they're coming into America and they're coming in looking for Jesus and they're worshiping. And you're not. Something wrong with that picture. You're too busy and got caught up into all of this racism and black and white and all this division and this hate and this black lives matter and white lives matter and this life matter and impeachment and this, this president and that president and old President Obama and President Trump and Hillary Clinton and Congress and, and Sheila Jackson. You got caught up in all of this mess when things are happening around you in your household, in your church, and you like just ignoring it. Here we go. Charles Colson, 
While the church may seem to be experiencing a season of growth and prosperity, it is failing to move people to commitment and sacrifice. Yes, we may, we may be moving in prosperity. We may be gaining in growth in numbers of membership, but we're not uh, teaching. A lot of pastors are not teaching the true word of God to have people to commit to Jesus Christ. That's what's happening now. It's all about the feel good message. Oh, God is going to bless you with a nice career and a business. And God's going to bless you with a nice house and a nice car. You can have all of that if you're mature to handle it. But at the end of the day, have you been saved, sanctified, and filled with God's Holy Spirit and delivered from your sins? No. Uh-uh. It's about the feel good message. The way I came in, I want to feel good for that hour and 30 minutes to two hours when I leave. Uh, I just got a hot good message and that was it. And I'm ready to go back to do what I was doing because Monday through Saturday, I'm an atheist and I only, uh, I only think I feel good on Sunday mornings when I get up and put on my nice clothes. And clothes and makeup ain't going to make you look good. That don't make you feel good either. Okay. The hard truth is that we have substituted an instant and an inst institutionalization religion for the life changing dynamic of living faith. So what we have done, we have traded for an institutionalized religion. And we just gave away this dynamic life of faith. This is how Satan slither in. While we worried about uh converting i was talking to a young lady she said she was converting from catholicity to jehovah witness and i'm like what are you converting you need to give your life to god you need to let god renew your life you're living for christ not an institution you're not living for the church of god in christ you're not living for the pentecostal church you're not living for the church of god you're not living for the baptist you're not living for jehovah witness you're not living for the catholic you're not living for for a uh, being a uh, uh, methodist you're not living to be a muslim you're not living to you know, all these people talk converting jesus christ he's his arms is waiting for you to come to him that's why he died on the cross for our sins. People are so busy trying to follow religion and institutions and names. Your soul is lost. It goes on to say for most of the churches, the building where we assemble to worship, its ministries or the programs that we get involved in, its missions is, the, is to meet the needs of the parishioners, the congregation, the members, and its servants are the professional clergymen we uh, ordain to put, to oversee and be a shepherd. Uh, church growth has come to refer more to such things as location, marketing, architecture programs, and head counts to the maturity to the maturity of the body of Christ. So we didn't lost focus. We worried about how beautiful and this and that and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we want to have beautiful places to go into work. We want to have that. But when that become the main focus and we lose in touch with getting people saved, that, that's a problem. That's why we got so many people out here with a lot of mental issues because we're not reaching out. As I say, a well-known pastor right here from Houston went up to uh, Jamal Bryan Church. He concerned, so concerned about a sacrifice offering instead of worrying about people's lives being saved. Instead of people, he's worried about uh, money instead of getting people filled with God's Holy Spirit and delivered from sin. Y'all know who I'm talking about. When compared with previous generations of believers, we seem among the most thoroughly at peace with our culture and least adept at transforming society and the most desperate of meaningful faith. Right now, it's a lot of confusion. Our mission is obscured. Our existence as people, they're in jeopardy. Worst of all, our leaders know this, but seem unable or willing to do anything about it. 
You're not teaching the true doctrine. You're not teaching people where they come from. You're not teaching people the true word of God that can bring them healing. So they're suffering. This is why a lot of people don't want to go to church because they see all the sin that's going on from the pulpit from outside. They looking from outside in to see all the sin that's going on in the pulpit. And in the congregation, why would I want to go into that church when these people are sinning up and down? The pastor sleeping around with other women having babies. The pastor sleeping around with little boys. The first lady, she's sleeping around with other men. Don't know if the child that she had is her husband's, who's the pastor. She probably sleeping around with women in the church and other girls. You got people that's married sleeping around with each other in the church and men sleeping with men and women sleeping with women. So when the secular world see that, what you think they're going to do? I don't want to go in that church. <laughs> Man, they're they, they doing, they're worse than the, the, the people out in the world. I thought the church is supposed to be a light. People walk through these doors. But guess what's dominating inside the church now? If you read the book of Romans, you'll see about this, Romans 1 through 16. Secularism is starting to dominate the church now. Because why? Because the leaders are letting it happen. Let's go to uh, Acts 2, verse 41. Acts 2, verse 41. Those people who accepted what Peter said were baptized. About 3,000 people were added to the number of believers that day. They spent their time learning the apostles, teaching. They spent their time listening to God's word, sharing, breaking bread, and praying together. It's time for a revival, church. We got to get back to the basics. Listening to the true Doctrine, teaching of God, sharing it, breaking bread, and praying together. Let's go to 1 Corinthians oh, chapter 1, verse 2. And it goes on to say, to the church of God of Corinth, to you who have been made holy in Jesus Christ, you are called to be God's holy people with all people everywhere who pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. There's a problem in the church. We need a revival. We need a revival. Let us go now to Colossians. Chapter 1, verse 18. And it says, He is the head of the body, which is the church. Everything comes from Him. He is the first who was raised from the dead. So in all things, Jesus has first place. Okay, so if your offering has became your first place, that is a problem. If your choir has became first place in your church, there's a problem. Because the first thing we're supposed to be worshiping is Jesus Christ. The first thing we're supposed to be doing is, 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 is touching people and, and, and leading people to Christ instead of a religion. Y'all better get this together. This is why you see a lot of churches in the ghetto, in the hood, the black churches, you're losing. Because a lot of you are not teaching the true word of God. You're so worried about your, your tithe and your offering and this and building fund and this and that. Instead of worried about getting souls saved, let's go for all churches. If you're in that category, you need, you need to think about it. You need to think about it. I'm preaching to all churches. And like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly preaching to my black churches. Because in the black church, this is what it used to be like back in the day when I was growing up. 
The white Caucasian people used to say, ooh, we love to go to the black church because, boy, those people sure know how to pray. You know what they're saying now? Ooh, we want to go to the black church because those people sure know how to sing. We done went from praying to singing. They want to be entertained now because now the black choirs and all these uh, churches have became entertainers now. Instead of the preacher reaching out, instead of talking about so a seed of $1,000, you need to be calling out, there's somebody out there that's one second away from committing suicide. There's somebody out there getting ready to make have a divorce right now. There's somebody out there that's getting ready to uh, kill their child. There's somebody out there that's in a depression or mental state. This is what we need to be calling out. Not calling out, God told me to tell you to sow a seed of $1,000. God done bless you over and over and you're being greedy. This is what the church is for. Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25. Let us think about each other and help each other to show love and do good deeds. You should not stay from the church meetings as some are doing, but you should meet together and encourage each other. Do this even more as you see the day coming. Now, what this is saying. Now, I, I, it's bad to say this, but then I do see why a lot of people don't want to go into the house of worship. Because so many people are doing so much wrong in the house of worship that the outside world is saying, why should I want to go into that place? Look at all the sins and evil things that they're doing in there. Until we clean this up, God is going to continue to punish the church, the people in the church, because you are held accountable and you are held responsible for the souls of those that come through that door. It's time for a revival. You better start getting that fire back and pray Satan up out of these houses of worship because he's standing right in the pulpit. A lot of times... The pastor is a good pastor. He's an ordained pastor, but somehow in the mix, some associate pastors or assistant pastors or deacons or missionary or whatever youth pastor and snuck in with some evil thoughts and evil spirits. Oh, because they can bring a good word. Oh, because they can get a, a good a audience or they can bring in numbers and all. Oh, that, that's all, you know, all of that's all fine and dandy, but at the end of the day, if ain't no souls getting saved, you just wasting time. Got to get back to it. It's time for a revival. I hope you all have a nice day. And I hope you share this video. Because I'm sincere in what I do. No, I don't have a church. The world, the people out there in the world. Because the Bible say go out into the world and teach the gospel, preach the gospel, lay hands on those that are sick, talk to those people that are that are that 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 need that need someone to talk to. That's what I do. I'm not worried about four walls in the building and, and all of that. I'm a real trooper. I'm a real disciple. So if you want to join in into this Holy Ghost revival on, on video, you do that. Y'all have a nice day. May God bless you and let the Holy Spirit come into your life and keep you. Amen.